I think this is where the future of AI is heading. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? Today, I want to show you something pretty cool, and that is a sneak peek of the new game worlds that you can create or play with Runway. They will release that soon, but I will show it to you today. Let's get started. By the way, because my Facebook group got removed, I'm now starting a newsletter so we can always stay in contact no matter what. And if you subscribe to that, you also get free goodies. For example, this time I created a 14 minute long video how you can create really beautiful detailed characters and can keep them consistent in videos or novels or games, whatever you want to create. So maybe check that out completely free. Let's get started with this tutorial. On their website, you see here that you have this new section here and you have two options. You can create your own video game right away, do a description of the world and the mechanics and the characters in there and then it will create the rest for you or you can also play these games that have been generated by the communities, lots of choices. And the cool thing is here, you can experiment with a lot of ideas. There's no coding required. There is nothing but your pure creativity needed to create these very cool games that can actually go pretty deep. And by the way, this really reminds me about the talk that I was giving at the ConfiCon in Shanghai, where I was also talking about interactive game worlds that are created with AI. Now here there's a connection between the live streamer, the viewer NPCs that can play in the background, an economy and the dynamic world that is created by the AI. So there is multiple systems working in the background that create that world where also when the streamer is not actively online, you can still play in the background while AI is creating all of these amazing interactions. And you can potentially do some really fun stuff with that where the audience can chat with each other. They have an app where they can interact and play the game. There is ConfuEye running in the background, bringing everything together. And then of course you have the game world and the chat together that can be shown in the live stream and then they can interact and sometimes even be in the video game with the streamer. And of course you can use the AI to create an active game world with the story, with world events, with community projects with quests, crafting, stats, all these kind of things that can you run in the background. And of course, this means connecting multiple systems together. For example, they keep track of your profile, of your statistics, but also create icons that might be used over time or create new locations so that everything stays environmental, interesting, and the story can evolve over time, exploring new regions, adding new characters, all that kind of cool stuff. And even here, AI can be super beneficial, creating a dynamic lore in the background based on rule that you, for example, as a streamer have defined or as a game master, it can create world events for you, lay out the rules and then send out the tasks to the different players or create NPC backstories. Now, the interesting thing about an NPC backstory is not just that there is something to read, but for example, you could have that uh, NPC is a medic. And because of that, if you meet that medic, he has, for example, another learning book that will improve your health bar or other things where you have a backstory where the NPC has a son and that son has a special map that you need. So when you go to that son, he will have that map. So there is a connection created that creates and weaves this kind of world and the economy and the community inside of the video game. But that are just my ideas. And by the way, Runway, if you need someone to help you maybe working on these kind of game things and make them deeper and interesting, I have a lot of interesting concepts and also did some experimentation on how to make this into something pretty cool. But let's get back at what Runway is doing right at this moment. So I started this game here, Last Breath, two times. The starting story is that you have crushed with your spaceship on an alien planet. You don't have a lot of oxygen left and you need to find your crew and explore the environment. So this is the basic setup, but this can go into a lot of different directions and this is what AI is good for. So I actually started this game twice. In the first version that I started, 
I'm a botanist that knows about plant lives and has a lot of experience exploring that. And also that he is a about 40, 50 year old man with glasses. And so this is the character that was created by that. Now, I have to point out here that the images are kind of low quality and I think they are still improving that to get better quality in there. It might also be interesting to have some prompt infusion in the background to get actually better images out of that. But when you play through the game, it is interesting that now because I'm a botanist, because I know about plant lives, the story is actually also going in that way. So for example, here right at the start, it says that my carefully cultivated specimens, months of work studying alien flora are gone, scattered across the unknown world. So that's already pretty interesting. The story goes on and ever so often you get additional images that progress it. They try to keep the same character. You see here the older guy with the glasses walking around in this destroyed spaceship, trying to find his crew and then we venture outside you can also see here i have 59 minutes remaining now that is not real time that is game time but ever so often i get an update here i have minus one on my oxygen so my oxygen is good for an hour and i have down here as you can see I have pre-made choices that I can click on so I don't have to type anything or I can also type something down here. There's another interesting bit down here that you have this little flag and this might be an indicator where the game wants you to go for the story to progress. So this is basically the next step in the story and there's kind of like a certain grid laid out that you can follow. But the interesting thing about that grid is it's not a fixed grid. So the story can be dynamic within that grid. And this is what AI is made for. This is where the future of AI is going. So over time, this progresses. So because I'm a botanist, I also look at the ground. I find these tracks on the ground that I want to follow and explore them. I also ask of if it can detect immediate threats in the direction that I'm moving and it finds some plants out there. You can see here the plants in this image. Now, the interesting thing is in my story, this turns out that the plants, when I scan them, they have this kind of bioelectric plant structure and they send out signals and I can analyze these signals as you can see here. That's actually pretty cool with this kind of like holo display in front of me. And then I can start to communicate with these plants. That is pretty cool because it's based on my input of what I actually said in the story. However, in the second story, I'm this woman here. And I have also a girlfriend, which is, I said a mechanic, it turned out more like the captain. She's called Nina. And I'm also a weapons expert and an expert in uh, alien technology. So when I go outside here, a lot more is based on that, that I have technical knowledge, that I have strategic knowledge, tactical knowledge, stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here, right at the start, it says you push yourself up from the debris, your weapon training kicking in as you scan the wreckage. So that is actually picking up on how I decide my character is the quality she has in this case. And for example, also here, I'm looking for my girlfriend Nina, if she is there, if I can find her, if she replies to me. Again, I have the same setup with the 60 seconds. I scan for biosignatures, multiple crew members exited through the hull breach. And the story goes on. But in my case, I'm going outside and instead of interacting with these plants that have signals that I sent my way, I'm actually finding a uh, different alien creatures and one large alien creature that is transparent and it's like semi-liquid. So that's pretty interesting. You can also see here when I'm outside, 
I actually holding a weapon here. I look a little bit like a Mass Effect character here. So that's pretty interesting that this story turned out so different. So you have basically your own game experience while at the same time following a similar grid. And this is actually also important for gaming because gaming is not just the experience you have while playing the game. It is also the social interaction when you talk with your friends about the game you experience. So if you have a certain similarity of the rougher grid of the story, but then you have an individual story you can tell, there is a good amount of things you can talk about where say, hey, that's cool that this situation turned completely different out for you, but the overall story is the same. Now, the cool thing, of course, also is, like I said, you can create your own game world. So here I called it the Ghost Hunters. And of course, I use ChatGPT to help me a little bit with the setup here. I said I want to explore different abandoned locations with my team. We want to collect ectoplasma, but we also have to keep our sanity in check. So that is the setup here. Now, down here, we also have advanced options as you can see. So here I can say for the genre, I want to have horror, mystery, exploration. For the art style, I want to have concept art, highly detailed cinematic light, nighttime flashlights. And then the game mechanics, resource management of sanity from getting scared. But also I have to collect ectoplasma to win. And to win, I have to get 10 ectoplasma. Um, how to lose? I didn't write that here. Everyone in the team dies or goes insane. Let's write it like that. And then based on all that information down here, you can create a game image to have like a starting style, a decision. You can regenerate as often as you want. Uh, to create that kind of starting style experience. And then you can click here on create game world to make all of that happen. So as you can see, no coding is required for that. So now you can see here the starting setup of my video game. I step into a suffocating darkness of an abandoned place where tragedy has left its mark armed only with basic ghost hunting equipment and the fragile sanity of your paranormal investigation crew. That is pretty amazing. Now, what is my character's name? Let's just call him John in this case. And then it's thinking about that and it's asking, uh, tell us about John, what is he like? So I wrote John is a 35 year old ex teacher. He has knowledge in physics and history. He is a little pedantic, but also smart and creative in finding solutions. He does not like metal screeching. Let's click on continue. <laughs> this is amazing. So here we have our teacher character. I perfectly like I imagined it with this outfit and the glasses, everything there. So now we click on continue to get the game started. So as you can see here, this is pretty amazing. This is the start here. We arriving in a van with the team. We have here our statistics as demanded. So we have sanity plus 100, ectoplasma zero. The time is shortly before midnight, half an hour before that. Up here, you also have other statistics and three team members that we have. Now here we have the scene with the house, the van and our team here. Sometimes the scale is a little bit off, also the head size of the character, but Never mind that. I think they're going to improve that before they're going to release it. Here now, Sarah is asking me to pick this location from our list. And Marcus is asking about the historical knowledge. Also, interestingly enough, down here, it's giving me some additional statistics like the EMF detector is plus one. The flashlight is plus one and the voice recorder also plus one because they brought some equipment. They have a thermal camera to check that out. They have all your equipment with them. They have an EFM scanner to pick up the ectoplasma. Pretty amazing. Now, because I said I want to have various locations for that. Now down here, I am asked, do I want to have a hospital? Do I want to have a haunted school? Or do I want to check my equipment? Or I can also describe something if I want to have a different location. So I can actually pick here. Let's say we want to have a haunted school. So I played this game for a little bit and I have to say it is pretty fantastic. Not because of me, but because of the runway tech. So here I picked the school and already he says, oh, there is some like reports of like really terrible things have 
happened in that school. And then my team is bantering a little bit with me saying, Jesus, John, you really know how to pick them, don't you? And we go towards the building to check that out. You can see here the characters walking towards the building. Now the front door has already been opened by another team, but I decided that I want to circle around the building to see what we are dealing with here. So we are going to do that again. You can see these little blue flags. We walk around the perimeter of the building to look for other entry points. We find a corner where the thermal camera picks up something that makes her pause. So sanity going down. We have this image here. Look at that. It looks actually pretty amazing. Her holding this thermal camera here. They looking at the monitor, checking it out. And interestingly enough, they find a window that is boarded up with wood. And then there's a sudden metallic screech echoes from somewhere inside the building. Exactly where I said, hey, this is something that my character doesn't like to hear. Then they have this as the next scene. There is the boarded up window. I decide to break it open to look inside and to their shock, they find out when they pry that off that the basement is flooded and there is something floating in the water and something is moving also in the basement. Very unsettling. Sanity going down by minus 15. I have to say, so far the story is pretty interesting. The plot is thickening or we could also in my live stream test out some of your games. I'm really amazed by how this works and how fun it is to play with the text, with the scenes. So let me know in the comments what you think about that and what kind of game you would create. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.